We have with us Robert Pucher, who will talk about mind, and matter, mind matter interactions and probabilities. Robert holds a doctoral degree from the University of Technology in Graz, Austria. He's also a computer science professor and head of the master's program software engineering at the University of Applied Sciences Technicum I. Without uh, exactly. further introduction, I'll clear the stage uh, for you, Robert. Thank you, Ramses. Uh, my main interest is uh, that if any anything like like telepathy, telekinesis, or whatever, or abortion exists, it must somehow be within uh, our reality, uh, and our reality is quite well described by physics today. So I will start with some very simple questions, which are not simple at all. And uh, feel free uh, in the beginning uh, just to put some answers into the chat. What do you think? Why can we find two pilots in the cockpit of a commercial plane? Why do we need these pilots? Nobody would be comfortable to fly with a plane which flies on its own, even if, if computer science claims that it's possible. So what do you think why we need these pilots? And there's only one answer, which, which uh, to my opinion is the correct one. Those pilots have to deal with unforeseen circumstances, with things which go wrong, which think, uh, they have to deal with things which are different from what we expected. So there's a plan. Uh, computer scientists and uh, uh, experts from all, all areas, they do everything that the plane works fine. And then suddenly something goes wrong, which is a probability of, I don't know, one to a very, very large number. So it doesn't happen very often, but it happens. And science basically, or especially engineering, basically works on keeping those probabilities low. So they try to keep out everything which can enter um, our, our um, engineered world in an unforeseen way. If you go down to your car in the morning and you want to drive to work and you press the start button or you turn the key, whatever you do, you expect the car to switch on the engine. If it doesn't do that, something is wrong, but it happens. <laughs> That is why you have to bring the car to service and, 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 and. So why I, I elaborate on that is our world seems to be very simple and our world seems to be covered or, or seems to be controlled by very simple laws, but it is not. It is an engineering miracle for me to bring an Airbus, Airbus uh, A380 or a Boeing 747 up into the sky and keep it up there. And uh, much work had been done to, to achieve this. And the principles behind that, uh, they are very, uh, let's say, if you're interested in parapsychology, those principles the engineers use, they are just um, uh, contradictory. They, they really come from a different, different point of view. A similar question is, but a different one, why is it so difficult to build a self-driving self cars? Engineers have promised self-driving cars for uh, 10 years now, and still we don't see many of them in, in busy streets. There are some areas where you can use them, but basically in Vienna, in the city of Vienna, it's impossible to, to go by a self-driving car from one place to another place. It simply doesn't work. It always has to be controlled by a human. And here a similar problem is, reality is very complicated and reality is hard to foresee. It's very hard to say from the given moment now, what is going to happen in five minutes? And in that, uh, in that area where you can't foresee things, there are a lot of, of ways to manipulate a reality in a way um, mediums might be doing. And I, I want to show you some of these possibilities. Another question, which doesn't have anything to do with, with our uh, engineering world is, why do we never observe two identical waves? Never. 
the laws of nature we have, they have something built in which leads to a diverse, to a variety and and to to the the many things we see in our world. But even such a simple thing like a wave, it's never repeated. It's never repeated. There are so many different possibilities to um, for a wave to form that each individual wave is different. And this is something uh, our science uh, cannot really simulate or, or, or foresee. Same question is, why do we never observe two identical clouds? Whatever cloud you see, the cloud always looks different. And again, the, the reason for that, the reason for that can be found inside the laws of nature. And I want to show you something which which I really enjoy to do. I am a parachute. I, I jump out of planes. And let's ask a, a very, very simple question. A skydiver leaves a plane at 4,250 meters above ground, which is a normal exit altitude. And how much time will the skydiver need to reach the landing area? The question is simple. How much time? will the, the skydiver need to reach the landing area. And when you go through the stages of skydiving, you will see uh, first there, there is, is one moment when people uh, climb out of the plane and just let go. Okay? Then uh, the free fall starts. Uh, then uh, approximately one minute later, the skydiver is going, going to open the parachute. Then there is a parachute right down to the ground, then the skydiver will land, and then the, the skydiver is, is in the landing area. And when you start to model such things with, with our known uh, laws of physics or whatever we have, we find out we cannot tell how long, how much time the skydiver will need to reach the landing area because the free fall itself depends on the body position. It depends on, on, on many uh, tiny, on many small items uh, the, the, the skydiver can influence to, to, to increase or decrease the falling rate, uh, depending on the altitude where the skydiver decides to open the parachute. A lot of, of, of things jump in just by chance. Does the parachute open in a real way, in a normal way? Does it have a delayed opening? Uh, does it open at all, which happened to me one time? Then you have to use the, the reserve parachute. And, and then, so in this part, the variability of time needed is long. It can go from uh, two seconds up to five seconds, whatever, whatever um, the parachute needs to open. And if it starts open uh, uh, slowly, uh, you have less time uh, in in uh, the parachute ride. The parachute ride itself will take some minutes. So in the end, the only answer you can give if you want to predict this is um, it depends. It depends. But what does it depend on? This is the question which always bothered me. And this is the question uh, which which if you finally answer it, opens, opens a world of possibilities for phenomena which physics doesn't explain or which, which uh, our standard science doesn't explain, how they can enter our world. One example. Uh, we all know uh, from, from high school, or I don't know what, what the school type in other countries is, that there are Newton's laws. And let's, let's look at Newton's first law. The first law states that an object at rest will stay at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted on by, by net external force. Uh, this means that uh, the, if the, the net force on the object is zero, then the velocity of the object is constant. If you look down what the Greek philosophers, philosophers said, Aristoteles said, a body is in its natural state when it was at rest, and for the body to move in a straight line at a constant speed, an external agent is needed continually to propel it, otherwise it would stop moving. Who is right?
to my feeling, obviously, uh, Aristoteles is right. Because this is what we observe. What Newton did, Newton extracted a law which allows um, uh, to build a model. And if you model all other forces which, which are on that object, then finally you will be able to foresee what the object is going to do. Like you're sitting in a sports car, or well, let's say in a, in a Tesla uh, Model 3, and you accelerate. The Tesla is able to accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in three point something seconds. What does that mean? That means that the engine is producing a, a certain uh, force. The mass of the, the car, the track, the, the mass of the car produces a drag. The air resistance and, and the other resistance will, will uh, slow down the car. And so that force accelerates the car. Okay, and that you can calculate. And it feels, we feel very comfortable in doing that, but we overlook that we can't exactly tell, we can't exactly tell um, the, the time the, the Tesla needs to accelerate, accelerate to 100 km per hour. And if we go on, we can see, uh, if it comes to how predictable our world is, we all know that, that uh, solar eclipses in the 21st century, you can look up in Google, for example, in the 21st century, uh, century there will be 224 solar eclipses. 77 will be partial, 73 will be annular, 68 will be total, and 7 will be hybrids between uh, total and annular. And uh, if one uh, looks uh, how our solar system is constructed, uh, this, this, uh, the proportions don't, don't fit, but this is the sun, this is the moon, this is Earth, and it's, it's quite interesting that seen from Earth, the moon, uh, apparently is as large as the sun, so there's a shade of the moon which falls on the very small area on the earth and which gives the solar eclipses. To predict the solar eclipses, which is fairly easy for, for today's uh, methods, you need just to, to, uh, to calculate how the, the planets travel around sun, how the moon travels around earth, and so on and so on. But there's something which is hard to, to understand and it's hard to take. There's the so-called three-body problem in mechanics, which affects even the, the, the most stable systems we know, which, which are solar systems like, like our solar systems. And the three-body problem, exact, in, in our case, it's Earth, Sun, and Jupiter mainly, will lead that nobody can predict in five million years from now on what position Earth will be in, in uh, surrounding the Sun. I repeat that. Five million years from now, the accuracy of prediction will be one year. So. You don't know if on the 15th of May 15th in, a field in 5 million years exactly, if we have spring on the Northern Hemisphere, if we have fall, if we have autumn, or if we have winter. We don't know, we cannot predict. And whatever we cannot predict could be manipulated. So within that predict, we have to we have to take a closer look on on why we cannot predict this. But here in these um, in these areas where you can't predict what's going on, uh, there are lots of possibilities uh, for for things we don't know yet in in our scientific world um, to fall in and and to change something. Another uh, problem uh, in prediction is turbulence. We all know turbulence when flying in planes. And when flying in planes, it suddenly hits us. Uh, it's called, in, in this case, clear air turbulence. And the, the problem with turbulence is this is a fume which goes up. And until here, the flow is so-called laminar. 
and suddenly the flow starts to become turbulent. And what we lose in, in prediction when the, when the uh, flow becomes turbulent is we cannot predict which particle ends up here, which particle ends up here, which particle ends up here. And we repeat this over time. We never ever know which particles are going to move into, into this direction. And when you fly with a plane and you you um, you have clear air turbulence, the thing is that those particles which move in the in the atmosphere become rather large in in the in the atmosphere because there are no obstacles. So these particles can be in the mass of a of an airliner. And if such an air mass hits an airliner, you feel it, of course. And this is what 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 uh, the turbulence uh, can be felt. This also means a tiny element here, the butterfly, might lead to a tornado in another continent at a later time. And the the so-called butterfly effect uh, is is a huge area in in in. Um, in a chaos theory where you only know frameworks within the future will develop. Okay. There's one more. And this is probably the cause of all of all the, the, the phenomena. This this might be the cause. Quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics means that uh, the electron, which usually is a is a very, very tiny, a very, very, very tiny uh, particle. It's, it's unknown if, if it's a point or if it's a distributed particle, if it, if it covers some space. Nobody knows that. And uh, quantum mechanics tends to believe that the electron doesn't, doesn't uh, use space. It's, it's really a point. But if the, ele if the, if the electron, um, in a hydrogen atom surrounds the nucleus. Uh, it isn't a point anymore. You only can tell by probability where it is. And this is a very important thing. So our predictions of the world, at least when it becomes small, at least when it's in, 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 in uh, the area where turbulence, uh, 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 the regime of turbulence uh, is, and uh, the three-body problem, you cannot predict anything anymore over a given time. The so-called Lyapunov time is the system time of, of a system, whatever. And in this time frame, you can predict. And if you go further, you can't predict. You lose all predictions. But what does that mean? What does that mean? The underlying principles for that are uh, principles uh, which which had been discussed in the 70s and the last century very much and they are still being discussed a lot because um, in, in many cases in computer science it's very difficult to prove that something is correct. Anyway, there's so-called weak causality. Weak causality means if you have exactly the same starting point, you will exactly reach the same result. And here the problem of quantum mechanics uh, jumps in. You never ever can have the same and exact the same starting point. So whatever you do, you always reach a, a different point here if weak causality uh, rules. And there are many, many things where weak causality uh, can be observed. I will tell you, well, better, better, uh, because I have to hurry up anyway, better to talk about it directly now. Weak causality is um, in, in, in human life, for example, if you go to work every day and you take uh, uh, seven, um, I don't know, you, let's say you, you walk for one kilometer and suddenly while you walk, something happens and you turn around and you go back. So you know for, for some, because you never ever have the same starting point. It's a different day. You are in a different condition. You, you, you are not the same person on the next day. You never ever can, uh, can, can exactly predict what is going to happen. 
let's try to, to predict the outcome of a football match. You can't do that. You simply can't do that. Nobody, nobody can do that. And the reason is exactly this. So what we usually learn in physics and what we usually understand in, in physics is the, ah, oh, sorry, I have it in German, it's the strong uh, causality, which means that similar starting points will have similar goals. And that's how we think. Um, if we run from A to B and we run as we usually run, we will reach B in 10 minutes or so. If we are slower, it will be 11 minutes. If we are faster, it will be nine minutes. If I go by car from Vienna to Graz, it's 200 kilometers. I usually take two hours. Might take two hours, 10 minutes. Might take uh, one hour, 55 minutes. If I do it in one hour and 50, I get a traffic fine. So I don't do that. And we think our human mind likes this strong causality. It likes... If we do it that way and we do it similar, it, it will be similar. But this is not how our world works. We have something which is called deterministic chaos. We, every, we, we know that very well. And this means even from one starting point, if you know it indefinitely exactly, you will end up in different areas later on. And we know this from our weather. And uh, uh, this uh, from the University of, of Regensburg shows uh, this did lead to that situation later on, and this did lead to that situation later on, and they are nearly identical. And uh, in, in, in weather prediction, we know we have a time frame now, or we have, a, we have a range of, let's say, one week. Everything which is longer than one week, depending on the area on the world, of course, but in Austria, it's, it's, it's particularly complicated because we have the Alps, and the Alps divide the airstreams, and then, and, and. and so three days maximum, sometimes five days, but never one year, never one year. It's impossible. So what happens if someone is able to predict the weather one year in the future? We even can't find out that it was a prediction. And uh, this, this, this makes investigation of such phenomena very complicated. Let's try uh, an experiment. Bree, please raise your right arm now. As I can't see you, I don't know. Did I succeed? Did I produce an effect? <laughs> okay. Maybe some of you uh, uh, did raise your arm. Uh, probably many of you didn't, didn't raise your arm. Uh, but in fact, I did a remote mind meta interaction experiment because uh, my mind finally led to a reaction of, of muscles and uh, in, in maybe in moving your arm, but how did this work? How did this work? This is a very complicated thing. Why, why isn't it repeatable? Why do you do it on, on, on your own decision? Why do you decide I do it or I don't do it? What happens here? Let's have a closer look to that. Uh, when, you go, when you break this down to the laws of physics, um, you need to stop here because you, you can't you can't cover um, you, I can cover everything like how the the information from from uh, here came by the microphone to the internet and it, it was transmitted over whatever and it came out of the loudspeaker at your side but then something happens you decide you decide I do it or I don't do it I charge it that way um, I do it if I if I repeat it might be different okay. And the question, well, I go, I go shortly back to this. The question here is, um, how can it be possible that the mind is able to move the arm? How can the mind move the arm? And this is a very complicated thing inside your brain. And this depends on, on probabilities, which I will, will show you later. The, the question I have now is, and I only, I only want to show one case, it's, it's uh, the, the Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research, which doesn't exist anymore. 
uh, I I put it here because I, I know Robert Chan in person, and I spent uh, quite a few. Uh, I visited quite a few times at the lab, and and um, a student of our university stayed in in Princeton for half a year, and so I really got lots of insight into the into the experiments. And the basic idea of Robert Chan was to prove that uh, the human mind is able to change probabilities. And um, I really want to put it that way. The human mind, the intention of the human operator uh, should be able to change the probability. And this is a quantum mechanics device. It's a PN junction of a, of a semiconductor. And the PN junction basically produces uh, these signals, which are then um, uh, which are then used to judge if if um, if humans' intention did have an effect. I know there are many discussions about these experiments, and they had been repeated many times. Uh, some of them failed. We did a, an experiment which is unpublished in in our university. And we had a significant effect with about 5%, um, uh, as a 95% probability uh, that this was an effect produced by the, by the people who tried it. But uh, it's, it's hard to, to make, make such experiments waterproof so you really can publish them. Anyway, the thing is, uh, if you go back and look on other probabilities, I, I want to tell you a story. At the age of seven, a boy, uh, standing here in this church, which was full at that time, asked his father, why is the face of the priest black? The priest was standing here and, and was talking uh, to the Christian community, to the Roman Catholic community. The, the uh, priest was called Jakob Albin Milt. This was on April 7th, so on April 14th, 1968. And the, the priest died unfortunately, uh, on 21st of April in 1968. And the father responded to the boy, no, the face isn't black. It's just normal. I don't know what you see. And the boy insisted and said, but I have seen a black face. I have seen a black face. Why is the black uh, face black? This happened in, 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 the, in a small village surrounding Graz in, in Lower Austria, and this is a picture of the church. I know this event very well because I was the boy. I was that, that small boy, and I was so upset because my father didn't believe me. And it's very hard if, if I get, if, if somebody tells me a story like this, but it's a different story if I personally experience that and of course i learned that the priest died later on and uh, i must i must say i never ever had such a, had many different experiences but never such an experience anymore so i don't see black faces anymore but something stayed in my mind and it stayed through through my my studies and it, it was always hard for me to understand uh, or, or I experienced such a thing, so I wanted to have an answer. How can that be possible? And it has to do with probabilities. Let's say, let's look what the, the human brain does. The human brain, for example, I ask this person, what do you see? The person is looking at this picture. The person perceives the picture over the known pathways, the, the eye, then here the, the pre-processing of, of the signal is done, then something happens in, in, in the brain, and this person is going to tell me something like, I don't know what, I see a river and a bridge and some buildings, whatever. It's, it's a decision of the person what this person is going to tell me. If you're familiar with that site, you might say, oh, that's the river Danube in Budapest. Or you might say, you might even know that famous bridge. It's a very beautiful bridge, by the way. So what the person actually tells me depends on uh, what is inside the brain of the person and what the uh, person is going to do. So let's uh, see the case in, in if, if something in remote perception uh, takes place. So somehow the information 
of something the person doesn't know comes into the brain, somehow it's processed and somehow sound waves are formed and, and I just assume that the person is going to say, I see something flat and shiny. In my case, this was, uh, I was seeing a black face and I didn't have any, any interpretation of what that means. It was just black, and, um, but it disturbed me. Okay, so what happens inside the brain? And inside the brain, you have uh, quite interesting um, uh, enough the, the, the brains of, of many animals are very similar, especially the, the brains of monkeys are very similar to our brains and chimpanzees. Uh, I, I can't understand why, why scientists doubt that chimpanzees have a conscious mind. The brain is, is absolutely the same as our brain, it's just smaller. Okay, so we have about uh, 86 billion neurons in our brain, which are interconnected in a very complex way. And when you look on the interconnection of these neurons, this is what makes us think, this is what allows us to perceive, this is what allows us to, to, um, to do whatever we do. Uh, every, every thought we have, every muscle we move, every dream we dream, uh, and we tell about the dream, must have a, a correlate here in, in the neurons. And when you get a closer look to the neurons, you see that those neurons are interconnected. This is a single neuron. They, they form networks like this. They are densely packed. The, 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 um, uh, the illustrations of neurons you usually see uh, is not correct. This is a more correct way of, of, of showing how neurons are. And basically, the connections between the, neuro, the neurons, the, the synapses, these, these uh, connections form the way how our network works. And I don't want to go deeply into that. Uh, it's, it's part of, of what I do in, in, in the university, is artificial intelligence and, and the human brain. The, Neuro, the, the connection of the, of, the, of the neurons, um, in a way, they are unstable. So tiny inputs, absolutely tiny inputs here, have a major effect somewhere else in the, in the network. And when you go, when you have a closer look onto that, you see that there are scientists like Henry Stepp, who says, uh, Stepp considers some brain processes such the, the, the calcium ions that are involved in the release of neurotransmitters. This is exactly what happens here, only can be described uh, by 99% uh, by classical mechanics, which is understandable because the, the, the holes through these, these um, ions must pass, they're very small. So to put it together, only 99% of the activity of the brain probably can be described with classical mathematics. The rest uh, is influenced by quantum mechanics. And this is why uh, Henry Stepp assumes that quantum mechanics does have an influence on, on how our brain works. And this is exactly what happens here. When, you, when I go back to this slide, it's highly likely that somehow there are tiny changes of probabilities in the brain which finally lead to perception. So if I, if, I, if I repeat that, whatever you change here in the brain uh, will lead to, to different experiences of, of, of the person and the brain somehow is being controlled by me because I, I learned my whole life how to move, how to do, how to think, and so on and so on. So uh, tiny changes here, indefinitely small changes, which become larger over time, as I pointed out earlier, do have a huge effect here. So if humans can control tiny probabilities, they are able to do uh, everything which uh, can be uh, based on the brain, which is uh, remote viewing, telepathy, um, even influencing other people, influencing other people in the way that, that maybe a, a group of people 
thinks to experience the same thing, but in, in reality, they didn't experience anything. It just happened in their brain. So there is a lot of possibility of, of um, things which go on inside the brain, which are, are triggered by effects which are so small that we can't really uh, take them into account in, in our, our models if we try to model brain function. Okay, I will hurry up a little. So in the end, by these mechanisms, you can, uh, all paranormal effects which predominantly occur in our brain, uh, you have uh, the possibility that they might occur in such a way, which is telepathy, remote viewing, remote sensing. And as I said, also if a group of people perceives the same phenomena, this might be an effect inside the brain of these people. But not, not exclusively for that, like images appear. Belmes, the images of Belmes, uh, uh, for example. If you have a process in the ground, which can be influenced by some unstable um, uh, situation which uh, uh, evolves over time. And if you make tiny changes somewhere, it might lead to something people can recognize, people make sense of. Because what we see in here is a face, which is a face for us. If you show this to a a snake, she will be, a snake will not be interested in that. It doesn't have a meaning for a snake. This is something uh, I cannot um, um, include in the talk. This took not enough time. But the subjective meaning of something is very important, even uh, from the point of view of information theory. This can take uh, sensitive instruments which quit to work, like the Pauli effect, which is quite known. Wherever Pauli appeared, the, the laboratory didn't work. So they didn't make a lot of jokes at that time. And uh, I know people who just touch a computer and the computer doesn't work. And I know pilots, uh, a friend of mine who is flying uh, the Airbus series told me, uh, there's one captain, he's a co-pilot, and he says, oh my God, oh my goodness, now this captain is coming, I'm flying with that captain, I'm sure something is going to happen during that flight. It's, it's an, an anecdote, of course, but he honestly believes in that always when this captain is flying with him, something is going to happen, that an instrument is going to fail or they have some troubles with some, some uh, computers on the, on, the, on the Airbus or whatever. Heat transfer. You also can do by, by uh, changing probabilities in atoms. Telekinesis, levitation, honestly, I don't know. I, if, if it comes to this type or, or, or a portion of this type of, phen of uh, phenomena, I honestly can't tell if, if uh, they can be explained by that. So I come to the end. Thank you for your attention and I'm open to questions.